This video shows you all the updates that we made to our complaint handling procedure, SYS 018. It was updated January 1. Um, we've updated the procedure completely, and we've updated the form that you use for complaint records completely. We're also going to be hosting a live webinar on complaint handling to use as training for anybody that's going to use this procedure. That'll be hosted live on Thursday morning at 9.30 Eastern time in the morning. So if you buy this procedure, you get the entire bundle. You get our complaint log, our complaint record, our complaint procedure, and the webinar all as one bundle for $2.99. So let me show you what's inside. Okay, so this is our uh, page where you go to to buy the procedure. It's medicaldeviceacademy.com forward slash complaint handling procedure. On the page, I actually have a screen capture of the top of the procedure. So it gives you the revision. This is version 0 0.3. It was updated January 1st. Wherever you see company name, you'd replace that with your company name. So you can do control F and replace anywhere it says in brackets company name. You also would replace the logo. Use your logo instead. If you use themes um, in Microsoft Word, then you can change it on all your procedures simply by changing what's in the theme. Or if you're not doing that, then you can make the change manually. It takes about eight hours to make all the changes for our team to all our entire set of procedures for a company. But if you're doing it yourself, you need to learn the procedures, you read them, review them, that takes a lot, quite a bit longer. Um, in the top of this procedure, we also show you all the regulations that we're compliant with. So for each one, we've added color coding and we've added a symbol. This idea was to make it really easy to find wherever the requirements are found in the procedure. You just use control F and search for that symbol. So if you're looking for where ISO 1345 requirements are covered, use the exclamation point as your search criteria. It's not used very often in a procedure. Um, and that'll point you to all the places in that procedure. If you scroll down a little bit further, this is where you can add this to your cart and buy the procedure. It's $2.99, as I said. Um, and then you can purchase it using a credit card. I'm going to close that so I can show the rest of the screen. We also show you everything that's included. So as I said, the procedure, the complaint record, the complaint log, our native slide deck, access to the recording of the webinar, as well as uh, a quiz to show training effectiveness. If you take the quiz and send it back to us, we'll grade it and then give you a certificate for training effectiveness. And then I also make note here that this doesn't cover the medical device reporting requirements. We give you each of the hyperlinks to the procedures for that. And um, if you're interested in our turnkey system, you can click here and it'll take you to our turnkey quality system page. Now let me show you the inside the actual procedures. First, we're going to show you the log. This is list 11. This just gives you the revision history page. It's an Excel spreadsheet. Um, it's a fairly wide uh, table, but the reason why it's wide is it covers all of the extra requirements that would be needed to, um, that are minimum requirements in a complaint record for if something requires medical device reporting. They ask you, does the device fail to meet uh, specifications? Does it Was it used for treatment or diagnosis? Uh, what relationship does it have to the reported incident? And then this complaint closure is a metric at the end. Then I'm going to show you a couple other things. Um, our complaint handling procedure. So this is now a seven-page procedure, not a uh, four-page procedure anymore. Here's our um, flow chart showing what are the inputs and outputs of the process. Um, we have definitions with um, cross links to the regulation for that. Here's another one with a cross link. Here's the revision history. Um, you'll change this to 1.0 when you approve your procedure. Um, we give the roles and responsibilities. You would change it with the titles in your company. And as you can see throughout the procedure, we get hyperlinks to every single requirement with symbols and color coding. So you can find exactly what you're looking for whenever an auditor is asking. And then at the bottom of the procedure, we even have in here what kind of metrics we recommend for a complaint handling process. Whenever you're doing complaint handling, one of the minimum requirements we would expect is you track how long it takes you to close complaints. And typically the target's 30 calendar days for closing the complaint. 
means you need to make your regulatory reporting decisions in that kind of time frame as well. Um, down in the training section, we explain the revision numbers. If you're using a number that begins in zero, that means it's a draft. After it goes to 1.0, now it's fully released as an approved procedure. If the number before the decimal changes, then it's required that you get retraining. If the number changes after, that's a minor revision, not a major revision, and the minor revisions wouldn't require retraining. Uh, then we also say where the records are located. And there are a couple of comments here talking about records. If you have a virtual quality system or you have an EQMS. So you could use this procedure with either one. You just change where the records were located. Next, we're gonna cover the actual form. So this probably took the most amount of time. It took almost twice as long as making the revisions to the procedure because we took one extra step. We put every single requirement that would be required in the FDA's MedWatch 3500A form, and we put it in this complaint handling form. Doesn't mean you have to fill in all the sections if it's not reportable, but they're there available for you so you don't have to go look up MedWatch 3500A to know what information you need. So the beginning is very similar to our old form, just we laid it out as a, um, a protected form. So each of these, you can click on the buttons and deselect, and you can type here, but you can't edit other places. So people can't edit the form. Uh, they can only fill in the form. Um, and we made larger text boxes where it's needed. But you can see here in section E, it gives you the information that you would want to get for the, the lot number, the UDI, the serial number, the catalog number, the name of the device, the pro code, um, whatever information you would normally need about a device, it's provided here but it's provided with cross-references to the section of MedWatch 3500A, so you know exactly where it goes in the form. And we didn't keep it in the order that MedWatch does, but we did keep the cross-references. So section E is all together. And then the next section we thought you would probably need is section A, patient information. Um, and then probably um, after you make your decision or get your information about the, the patient, you would say, well, is this going to meet the definition of complaint or not? Um, or is it going to be reportable? So you have a reporting decision for the FDA. Um, we also have reporting decisions um, for other countries that are covered in this same form. We also have ways to document whether you're going to return the device. Here's the approval of the decision, whether it meets a requirement for a complaint, whether the investigation is a complaint, whether a CAPA is needed a review and approval of the CAPA decision. Then we have reporting decisions for Europe first, because that is the shortest timeline, then the US, then Health Canada. Um, then we also have uh, whether it's the decision to be reportable, that's dog, that requires some additional documentation. Same things that were identified in the, the uh, MedWatch, I'm sorry, in the uh, complaint log. And then at the bottom, we have um, reporting approvals, what kind of time frame does the person reviewing this approve that it was done correctly in the complaint closure. So those are the seven pages of our form. And then once again, going back to the procedure, oh, it's not seven pages, it's six pages here. So this is a six page procedure. Um, I must have trimmed a little bit of the fat uh, from the procedure and made a little bit more concise in the last edit. So. That's what's in our new procedure for uh, complaint handling. I hope that helps you make your decision whether you want to purchase this procedure. And as I said, the training for this will be live on Thursday morning, but we record all our trainings. So anybody that buys this, they will get access to the recording. They can download it and they can show it to their whole company and use it as their complaint training for the company whenever they hire new employees. So I hope that helps. See you later.